In this example, let's evaluate the integral of the function x over x squared minus 5x plus 6 with respect to x here. Uh, this is a rational function, so in order to find the antiderivative, we're going to probably going to have to use the technique of partial fraction decomposition. We want to rewrite this rational function as a sum of polynomials or partial fractions, proper fractions. Proper meaning here that we want the numerator to have smaller degree than the denominator. In this situation, the numerator has a degree 1, the denominator has a degree 2, so this is a proper fraction. So we can skip any need to use polynomial division of any kind. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to have to de decompose this rational function to a sum of partial fractions, um, each of which uh, will have a will be a, of a form that we can integrate because that's our goal. We want to we want to decompose this thing so we can integrate this and decompose here. It, it doesn't mean like there's some dead raccoon on the side of the highway. Uh, what, of course, it means is we want to break this up into smaller, simpler pieces. So with this decomposition, step one. Uh, what we need to do is we need to factor the denominator. Um, it's a crime when someone leaves their denominator unfactored, like in this situation, but uh, we can live with it. We need to factor the denominator, uh, in which case here that is we're factoring x squared minus 5x plus 6. Um, this situation is not so horrible. We have a quadratic trinomial um, whose leading coefficient is 1. So we're looking for factors of 6 that'll add up to be negative five. Uh, so we could take negative two and negative three. Notice if you were to FOIL this out, x times x is x squared. Uh, negative two times negative three is a positive six. And then if we get negative three x and negative two x, that adds up to be negative five x. We found the correct factorization. This we need to know, all right? The next thing we need to do is we need to find the template the template for our partial fraction decomposition. Now, back in the early days of Microsoft Word, um, if you were typing something on your computer like, dear Bartholomew, you know, it, there was a little animation of a paper clip, Clippy, who would appear and tell us things like, oh, it appears that you're trying to write a letter or, oh, it appears you're trying to write a resume. I can offer you some templates, which a template means that we want something that's already pre-structured, right? The formatting is done for us. Um, we just have to sort of enter our specifics. Like if we were writing our resume, we would type in our name, our um, experience, work experience, our skills, things like that. So for partial fraction decompositions or uh, PFDs for short, they have templates as well. And the templates can be based upon uh, the, the, the factorization of the denominator. So for us, our template, x over x squared minus 5x plus 6, the template's going to have the following. Remember, we're trying to decompose this into fractions, which will be any easier to integrate. And we're going to get two fractions that coincide with the two factors of the denominator we found before. So the first fraction, um, the first fraction will have as its denominator x minus 2. And the second will have its denominator x minus 3. Uh, but what the numerators are, we'll come back to those in just a second. So let me kind of explain why, the, why it's going to break up like this. Because if we were to add two fractions together, if the first fraction's denominator was x minus 1, and the second denominator's fraction was x minus 3, if we add these together, we'd have to first find a common denominator. The least common denominator would be their product, x minus 2 and x minus 3. And then we could add these things together. So if this, if this fraction right here is a sum of two partial fractions, it must have been the case that one of the fraction had a denominator of the first factor and the other fraction has its denominator of the second factor. So we can add those things together. But what is the numerator going to look like? Well, this is, the, this is the idea why it's important that this fraction is a proper fraction. If we have these two, if we have a proper fraction right here, then we can assume it's a sum of two proper fractions themselves. That is something less than one, right? Um, so by adding together two proper fractions, we're going to have a proper fraction. Now, if the first denominator is x minus 2, if it's a proper fraction, that means its numerator has to be a degree less than 1. Well, the only option there would be it's a, a degree 0 polynomial, which is a constant. So we actually know there's some number on top. We'll call it capital A for the moment. Um, we get some capital A. And then for the other one, there's some other capital, which we'll call it B. 
And so this right here is our template based upon the factorization x over x squared minus uh, x over x squared minus 5x plus 6. It'll break up as two partial fractions, something over x minus 2 and something over x minus 3, where those somethings are going to be real numbers. All right, so now we have our template. We're, we're doing pretty good. Now that you look at the template, the template itself is an equation. And so the step three here is you're going to clear the denominators in this equation above. Clear the denominators. That is, you're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. So on the left-hand side, you multiply by the LCD. On the right-hand side, you're also going to multiply by the LCD. Now, on the left-hand side, the, the least common denominator is, of course, just x squared minus 5x plus 6. That is x minus 2 times x minus 3. So they'll cancel out indiscriminately. On the right-hand side, you're going to have to distribute this thing through. So you end up with x is equal to a over x minus 2 times by x minus 2 and x minus 3. And then with the second one, you're going to get b over x minus 3. You times that by x minus 2 and x minus 3. And there should be some cancellation that happens here. For the first fraction, you'll notice that x minus 2 cancels out with the x minus 2 in the bottom. And for the second partial fraction, the x minus 3s cancel. And so doing this, our simplified fraction, or well, simplified equation won't have any more fractions. It looks like x equals a times x minus 3 plus b times x minus 2. So all of the fractions are now gone. And that's to say we've now we've simplified and we've uh, we've simplified by clearing out the denominators in a manner similar to this, right? So we get x equals a x minus 3 plus b times x minus 2. All right. So the next thing we want to do um, is we want to set up a system of equations. System of linear equations. So set up a linear system. So how does one go about doing that? Uh, what we're going to see is the following. Uh, what I want you to do is take these coefficients a and b and distribute them through here. Um, and if you do that, you end up with x equals ax minus 3a plus bx minus 2b. Now, looking at this equation, I want you to be aware that we have some variable x. And it's a variable. That means its number is allowed to vary. X could be 1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be lots of different assignments, right? Now, the numbers A and B aren't variables, in fact. They're, I mean, they're, they're unknowns, but they're not variables, meaning they're not allowed to vary. There's only one choice of A that's going to work. There's only one choice of B that's going to work. Um, we just don't know what they are right now, and we're using the symbols A and B as placeholders for what those are going to be. And so the reason I, I mentioned that distinction here is if we try to combine like terms on the right-hand side, x is our variable. We'd add together things like ax plus bx. So how do you add together ax plus bx? Well, you just add them together, a plus b times x. Now, we don't know how to simplify a plus b yet because we don't know what a, b, and r, but we can add together the coefficients of x. And we can also add together the constant terms. Negative 3a and negative 2b don't involve x whatsoever, so this would be considered a constant, negative 3a minus 2b. This is what the right-hand side is going to look like. The left-hand side is much simpler. You end up with 1x plus 0. Now, you don't typically write the 1 and the 0 here because it's implicit. But the reason I want to do that here is to make a connection. That when you look at the right-hand side, the coefficient of x is a plus b. But on the left-hand side, the coefficient of x is a 1. And the only way these two polynomials could be equal to each other is if their coefficients are equal. We have to equate these things together. And so we actually get the statement that a plus b, the coefficient on the right, is equal to 1, the coefficient on the left. Now we can also do this for the constant term as well. On the right-hand side, the constant term, that is that term that doesn't involve any x's whatsoever, is a negative 3a minus 2b. On the right-hand side, it's a 0. And so the only way that these two polynomials can be equal is if these are equated as well, in which case we then get negative 3a uh, minus 2b equals 0. And this now gives us a system of two linear equations with two unknowns. 
And there's a couple ways one could try to solve this system. We could use elimination, substitution, we could use matrices, determinants. There's a couple ways, and many of you might have seen this in the past, but that actually gives us the next step in our process here. Um, so let's see, we are on step four. So now step five here is we want to solve said system of equation. And again, there's a lot of ways that one could go about doing this. I'm going to solve it just by elimination. So I'm going to take the first, the first equation times everything by negative 2. Upon doing that, your system of equation will convert. You'll get negative 2a minus 2b. I'm sorry, I want to do a plus 2. Uh, so we're going to get plus 2a plus 2b is equal to 2. And then the other equation is negative 3a minus 2b equals zero. The reason I want to have a plus two is I want that when you combine the terms that one of the coefficients is opposite but equal. So we have a 2b and a negative 2b. So when you add those together, the b's will cancel. The 2a plus negative 3a gives you a negative a, and then you get two plus zero, which is two. Solving for a, we then get that a is equal to negative two, like so. Um, and now that we know that a is negative two, we can actually plug that into our previous equation and solve for b. Uh, we get that negative two plus b is equal to one. So add two to both sides, we see that b equals three, one plus two. And so with that in mind, we have a and b. Remember, these were coefficients of our template. Coming back above here, we have this template right here. So we can, we can now substitute the numbers a and b in what we found here. So I'm gonna just put that down here. So remember, we're trying to calculate the integral x over x squared minus five x plus six dx. By this technique of partial fraction decomposition, we've now discovered that the fraction can be rewritten as 3 over x minus 3 minus 2 over x minus 2. I switched the order because I want to put the negative 1 second. But this is the function that we want to integrate now. And it's what we've seen already just by a basic u substitution. You have 3 over x minus 3 here. You could bring the 3 out. You're left with 1 over x minus 3. And this is where the u substitution comes into play. The antiderivative of 1 over x minus 3 will be the natural log of x minus 3. And so a very quick calculation, we get three times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus three. We're gonna get minus two times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus two plus a constant. And this is our antiderivative here. Now I wanna emphasize that in this example, the actual calculus that we did was fairly simple. Uh, just using the u substitutions here. And we've done this before, which is why I kind of skirted through this one pretty quickly. The calculus is actually pretty easy right here. This whole, this whole shebang came about from a very lengthy algebraic calculation. It took us a while to find uh, this decomposition. It took a while to find the a and the b, all right? Uh, but once we found it, we could convert the rational function to this partial fraction decomposition and then find the antiderivative very, very quickly. So we need the PFD to help us find the antiderivative, but the PFD is the hard part of these problems, finding the partial fraction decomposition. It involves this type of decomposition process using the system of linear equations. Um, if it's an improper fraction, it might involve polynomial division. And so these can get quite lengthy, yes, but it, it's, it's a helpful algebraic tool to, to solve these type of problems. Now in the next video, I want to do another one very similar to this, but I want to show you a different algebraic technique. Um, if you're not a big fan of systems of equations, there is another technique one could use. Uh, so stay tuned for that.